Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some glory. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. We welcome him in this place. Hallelujah. We give him glory this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. We come to open up our mouth and give God some glory. Come on. Come on. We come to, to praise him on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth. Come on and bless the name of the Lord with me. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Hallelujah. We are the tent of David and we welcome you on this blessed Sunday morning. Amen. We come to give God glory. We come to lift his name on high. We come to magnify his name. We come to give God some praise. We come to give God some honor because all of it belongs to him. Hallelujah. Do I got some witness on the line right now with me who's willing to bless the Lord at all times and spite of what you may go through in spite of how you may feel in spite of what it sounds like come on and open up your mouth and give God some praise Woo! come on and bless his name hallelujah we come to lift him up this morning I don't know what you're going through but this is the day that the Lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you have to remember what he's already done, baby, just think about it. He woke you up this morning, gave you activities of your limbs. Come on, somebody, eyes to see, ears to hear, a mouth to open up and give him praise. Come on, somebody, he gave you feet to walk, legs to hold up. Come on, if you have to remember what he's already done see sometimes we don't have to look way back and see what he's already done but if we can just think about the goodness of god and how he just woke us up this morning see that's enough to give god praise that's enough to tell god thank you good god almighty hallelujah hallelujah and it's always good to look back and, and decree the work of the lord and all what things he's already done. Don't get me twisted now. Come on, somebody. There's nothing wrong looking back. Hallelujah. But some days we don't have to look back far. We don't have to look too far if you know what I mean. Because when he woke you up this morning, he had you on your mind, on his mind. Come on, somebody. And he wanted you to know since I woke you up, it's another day to trust God. It's another day to love God. It's another day to pull on God. It's another day. Oh, Jesus. I feel the spirit of the living God this morning. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is a freedom. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's something about God's spirit. There's something about his spirit. There's something about being in the presence, in the presence of God. Ah, the Bible says there in his presence, there is a fullness of joy. That lets me know when I'm in his presence. Come on, somebody. Sickness can't come with me. Bondage can't stay with me. Come on, if I got pain, pain got to leave. Oh my God. If I'm worrying, it got to go. Good God Almighty. Because when I enter into his presence, some things just can't go with me. Because I am the presence of the Almighty God. And the Bible declares that he that dwelleth in the secret place. Oh my God. Abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. That lets me know that I'm covered under his wings. That lets me know that he got me. Come on somebody. If I can just get one person this morning to touch and agree with me by the way of the spirit. I came to lift his name. I came to make the devil out of a liar. I come, come God Almighty, in the name of the Lord. Come on, if you can just remember what he's already done for you. If you can just remember who he really is. Some say the I am that I am. 
Some say Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and he is the end. He's the first and he is the last. He is the creator of the universe. He sits high but yet he looks slower. Good God Almighty, I'm talking about the I am that I am. I'm talking about the God over everything. I'm talking about the God of all flesh. I'm talking about the ruler who has sovereignty and majesty. I'm talking about a God. If you can remember, who is it to you? He's our redeemer. He's your way maker. He's your light in darkness. He's your, come on, he's your shelter in time of storm. He's your refuge. He's your castle and defense. He's your strong tower. He's your shield. He's your buckler. He is your God. He is your God. He's everything that you need him to be. If you need Jehovah Jireh, I dare you to call on him. If you need Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, I dare you to call on him. He's El Shaddai. He's the all sufficient one. He's Jehovah Sikhanu, God of righteousness. He's Elohim. That's something about remembering who God is. Hallelujah. I dare you right now. If you're in a place and you can't see clearly, you don't know which way to go. Matter of fact, you got some things up against you. But I can promise you this. If you can just remember, remember who he is. Remember what he's done. I guarantee everything that you're in right now, it will begin to fall off on you. Come on, somebody. Confusion got to go. Low self-esteem got to go. Spirit of rejection got to go. Oh, who am I talking to? Just begin to remember who the Lord is to you. Poverty can't stay. Come on, somebody. I'm not good enough, can't stay. Come on, somebody. I don't have the qualifications. Come on, somebody. Well, I'm not pretty enough. Come on. Somebody, you was wonderful, fearfully and wonderfully made, baby. Just remember, just remember who he is. Just remember who God is in your life. And I tell you, even in that dark place, when you begin to call on that name, light has to come forth. Light will break through. When you begin to call on that great name, that great name, hallelujah, whoever God is to you, just begin to call on his name. He is a God of a breakthrough. He's a God of a deliverer. He is God and he's God all by himself. There's nobody else like him. I looked all around, couldn't find nobody else. I looked all over, still couldn't find nobody like him. I looked to my mama, sorry mommy, but you ain't it. I looked to my daddy, sorry daddy, you ain't it. I looked to my child, baby, I love you, but you ain't it. Come on. But I looked to the hills. I looked to the hills. I looked to the hills. Come on, come on, come on. I looked to the hills. I looked to the hills. I looked to the hills. I look to the hills which cometh my help and my help cometh from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody ought to praise him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm about to get out your way. I'm giving God some praise. Don't mind me. If you know the week that I've been through, you're going to wonder why she's acting the way she's acting right now. But baby, if you can only walk in my shoes and everything that I've been through, even on yesterday, see, I got a right to give him praise. Good God Almighty, come hell or high water. I've learned to give God praise. Come hell or high water. It will not knock me off of my post. Come hell or high water. In spite of what this body 
body may feel. I'm going to give God praise. You better hear me in here. I'm going to give God praise. I'm going to give him praise. Under the bush. Hallelujah. If you can turn to me, I'm about to get out your way. Hallelujah. If you can please turn, we already in it. Praise the Lord. If you can turn to Psalms um, 100, starting with verse 4 and 5, I promise you, I'm getting ready to get out your way. Amen. I'm getting ready to get out your way. Hallelujah. What a blessed, blessed day on today. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. God is good, y'all. God is good. Come on. Hallelujah. I may not be where I want to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. And some of you got that same testimony. Come on, somebody that you don't look, look, you don't look like what you've been through. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't look like what you've been through, baby. See, some people come on somebody they counted you out a long time ago, but yet you're still here. Some of them turned their back on you, but baby, yet you still here. Come on, somebody. Some of them, some people thought you wouldn't even make it this far. Come on, but you're still here giving God glory. You still here giving God praise. Matter of fact, you still here proclaiming the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on and give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can, I'm starting at um, Psalms 100, the fourth verse, and it reads, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generation. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise on that right there. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Come on. The word is already blessed. Hallelujah. That's a call to praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody that knows me, you know I got to praise God in spite of what it feels like. Come on. I got to give God praise because I just truly believe when you can give God praise in spite of what's going on. Come on. You better hear the heavens will begin to open up. God will begin to hear you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Amen hallelujah hallelujah we thank God hallelujah the next voice you will hear giving pastor um, Jay some time um, to come on in that that will be the next voice you hear praise ye the Lord hallelujah once again we thank God for you we thank God uh, for all that he's doing amen uh, we thank God for just this Sunday morning and I truly believe there is a word from the Lord amen so as the men of God prepare to come forth you continue to keep him lifted in prayer as well as myself that we be all that God is calling us to be. Come on. In a time and day such as this. Amen. Hey, because he, hey, he called us. We answering the call. And you ought to feel the same way because we're praying for you too. Amen. Glory be to God. At this time, I'm going to call my very own. Come on, Pastor, my husband, Pastor Harris. Amen. 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 Glory be to the Lord, to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on. He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. I know it don't always look good. I know it don't feel good. But hallelujah, he's still worthy of all of the praises. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Come on, in spite of everything that we're dealing with and going through, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I really believe that there is a word from the Lord. Um, I pray that you are ready to receive what the Lord has for us today. I pray that you have your Bibles with you and that you're ready. And that you will turn with me, if you will, um, in the book, in the gospel of first Peter in the book of second Peter chapter number two and we're going to look at um, merely I want to concentrate on a verse um, that the Lord has given me I don't know exactly where we're going to go <laughs> don't know exactly what we're going to do right now um, but I'm determined that in the midst of everything uh, that I face that I'm leaving everything that doesn't have to do with my future behind me. Hey Amen. I, I just want to encourage you this morning and, and, and let you know that um, it's time out. We said last week on uh, playing church and doing things as usual. 
Um, but I believe that God wants to do something new in all of us. And I believe that God is planting us and he has put something on the inside of all of us that we need to share with the world. Um, so I came to let the enemy know today that um, I, I don't have time for no more mess. I don't know about you, but, but I, I'm determined that I don't have time for no more mess. <laughs> I don't have time to do anything else but try to seek God and, and seek his will for my life. Come on, I don't know about you, but I've gone some places. I've done some things. I've Come on, I've, I've, I've been in some places that I shouldn't have been in. But thanks be to God that God brought me out of it. And now I don't have time for no more mess. I, I, I'm deciding today to leave that mess behind. <laughs> if you will, just encourage somebody um, um, on the line or in a text message sometime today and just tell them, leave that mess alone. Yeah, just leave that mess alone. Here, in this particular text here, we look at verse number 20. In 2 Peter chapter number 2, verse number um, 20. I'm going to read from a different version of scripture. It is the Common English Bible. I want to read a little bit to you. Um, verse number 20 says, If people escape the moral filth of this world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then get tangled up again and overcome by it. They are worse off than they were before. Uh, verse number 21 says, but, 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 but it, it would be better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than to have come to know it and turn from the holy commandment entrusted in them. Verse number 22, the last verse, this is our key verse. It says, they demonstrate the truth of the proverb. A dog returns to its own vomit and a washed soul or a pig waddles or waddles in the mud. May God have a blessing, add blessings to his word as we hear it. God, Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, God, that you will... Open our understanding and enlighten us that we can hear what you have to say to us. And God, that we may apply it to our lives. Show us us so we can see us. Don't show me my neighbor. Don't show me anybody else. But God, show me me in your word that I can be better in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen out there where you're at. Amen in the house. Amen. Uh, this, this particular Proverbs here that, is, that, that, that Peter here is writing about here. This Proverbs here is in Proverbs chapter number 26, verse number, um, in 26 and verse number 11. The word of God says, it says in Proverbs, it says, like a dog that returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats foolish mistakes. So a fool repeats foolish mistakes. The writer here um, one writer states this, and I like this statement. He says, for if after they have escaped the pollution of this world does not necessarily mean that they have, they had been a true Christian or, and have fallen from grace because people may outwardly reform. People may change on the outside. Then he says, and he states, I quote, after uh, knowing um, the, the, the Lord Jesus and acknowledging Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, it, does not, it, it also does not imply that they were true Christians or that they had ever had a saving knowledge of the Redeemer. It speaks of uh, them may not having an inward reform. If we look at the text and we see here, we notice and we see that the word reform means this. The word reform means to put an end to an evil. To put an end to an evil by enforcing or in, by introducing a better method or course of action. 
Reform also means that if you really want to make it plain, it also means to change one's behavior and character for the better. Hmm. Reform. And so, sisters and brothers, what we find out here in the word of God is that um, um, uh, uh, um, those who are reformed on the outside only change on the outside. Uh, but those who are reformed inwardly change within and the evidence of the change that took place on the inside is revealed on the outside. Reminds me of an old song that something on the inside is working on the outside. And oh, it said, what a change in my life see see what we have to understand is that the these this this system brother that that some people know how to talk the talk but don't know how to walk the walk they don't know how to walk the walk a lot of people got got a lot of mouth action they got a lot of mouth action Be, but but they don't know how to walk come on they don't know how to walk they don't know how to walk the way that they're supposed to walk. They don't know how to live the way that they're supposed to live. And so what we learned is, is that what, what I've learned is that whatever we say as believers, whatever comes out of our mouths should line up with the way that we walk and the way that we live. Come on, I, I know I'm not going to get too many amens right here right now. But the way, the, but whatever comes out of our mouth, our, my, the, the lifestyle that I proclaim with my lips and that I speak out of my mouth also should show in my lifestyle. Because I learned, like many of us have learned, that actions speak louder than words. And some people are all talk and no action. If, if, you, if you were to ask Josiah, Josiah would probably say they really don't want no smoke. <laughs> because a lot of people talk a good game, uh, but, but they really don't have power to back it up. And so what I'm understanding is, is that the, the first thing that the enemy wants to do and that he desires to do is to tangle us up. In order to, to keep us bound, he wants to tangle us up and lock us up in order and in hopes that to, to overtake us. But the Bible lets us know in Mark 3 and 27, Jesus says that no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good except he will first what? Bind the strong man. And then he can spoil the goods. What the enemy desires for the people of God to do is to fall back and get re-entangled in things that we, we were used to. Things that God has delivered us from. Yeah, he wants to get us entangled in things because the enemy's job is to, is, is to bind us. Is to try to bind us and entangle us and put us in stuff that, that, that connect us to our past. Ah, some of us have let the enemy um, bring our past into our present life. And that's a dangerous thing because the, if you're not smart enough and strong enough, the enemy gives the illusion that your past has power over you. Come on. He gives the illusion like as though your, what you've been through um, dictate where you are and dictate how you um, act and how you react to certain things. No, what I've been through has no power over me. And I want to tell somebody this morning that, that only the only, only way that your past can have power over you if you're all talk and no action come on he he understands the enemy the devil understands that that some people talk a good talk game but they don't have no power come on you've got to have some power nowadays so in other words looking strong is not enough in this day and time looking like you've got it all together is not enough in this day and time come on acting like everything is fine in your life is not going get it this time because the enemy now is trying the saints and the people of God he's trying those who confess to be believers those who confess to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost he tries you to see if you really got what you proclaim that you have okay so now what happens is is when the enemy tries to overtake a person I'm learning that it's not, it, he, it, it, it's his job to come against us. 
Come on, don't think it's strange when the enemy comes at you on your job. Huh? Don't think it's strange when he tries to bring up old habits in your life. Don't think it's strange even when the enemy tries to put thoughts in your mind. He tries to put you in, in low self-esteem and he tries to put you in, in, in places to where you, he can get you by himself. And so he can work on you. And what you have to understand is that whenever you are saved and you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you ain't got room for the enemy. Mm. There's no room for the enemy because uh, when, the, when, 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 when you clean up your house and get your house in order, the enemy can't come in and play with you. Come on. He can't come in and live in your life. He can't come in and rule because Jesus lives on the inside because God is ruling. He can't come in your house. And try to take over because you've got something on the inside. Ah, uh, that's evidence uh, that something is on the inside. It's evidence that, that something is working in your life because it looks like the illusions looks like that you're losing. The illusion looks like that you're not greater and that you're not going nowhere. The illusion looks like God has left you and abandoned you. And it seems like he's not answering your prayers. But God says all you have to do is remember what I spoke to you in secret. Hmm. Ah, remember when you called me and you called on me and I came into your life and I saved you. Remember, remember, remember ah, that if I'm for you, then I'm more. Huh? Huh? Then the world is against you. I don't I don't know who this is for this morning, but you've got to remind yourself that God is on my side. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and, and what I learned is, is that we also have to watch the people that we keep around us. Come on, watch who's around you because, uh, um, because you can be in a good place with God. Yeah, I ain't going to say nothing. You can be in a good place with God and have the wrong company around you and have the wrong company around you. And, and they, if you're not strong enough, they'll pull you back. And entangle you in the yoke of bondage. Jesus said to take on my yoke. For my yoke is easy. It's light. My, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy. I, I, I'm, I won't make you do some stuff that you don't need to do. But when you yoked up with Jesus. When you put the yoke of Jesus. The yoke of God on. It, he walks with you. Come on. And he talks with you. And he teaches you how to be better. How to be reformed on the inside. Ah, last week topic is. Uh, it's time out. Hmm. Huh. And can I warn you. The warning today is. Uh, is that we have to stop playing with fire. Hmm. Y'all gotta we you gotta hear me. We gotta stop playing with fire. Stop playing with things that might get you burned. Huh? Stop playing with things uh, that might get you knocked out the way. Stop playing with things that will re-entangle you and put you back in the yoke of bondage. Stop uh, stop getting yourself in a place and the, where the enemy can take rule over you. Stop putting yourself in predicaments to where the enemy can play with your mind. Ooh. Oh, come on. We already know, like, like Solomon, Solomon here keeps playing with Delilah. Huh? He keeps playing with Delilah to the point to where uh, 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 he, he kept getting re-entangled over and over and over again. Can you ask yourself a question? If I am saved, how is it that I keep getting re-entangled in the same thing? Come on. Uh, now, now don't think it's strange. Don't, don't, don't think this question is, 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 is crazy, but, but, but because all of us go through things, but I believe there comes a point in your walk with God to where you graduate from certain things that you used to do. Come on. Certain things that you used to wrestle with and fight with. When you walk with God long enough, these things begin to fall off of you and you're no longer the same. We have to stop playing and get reformed on the inside. Come on. Come on. I don't know. We, I know we might not shout today. We may not. May not hoop a little bit, but 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 I want us to understand that when you play with fire long enough, you might get burned. Mm. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might get burned if you play with fire long enough. If you play with it long enough, you might get burned. If you play with it all the time, something might catch on fire and it might not be, it might not be what you want to catch on fire. So we have to learn to watch out for the Delilahs in our lives. People in your lives who you think are for you, who are really against you. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, they, they say one way that they, they look like on the outside that they're for you, but really they're, they're backstabbers, they're, they're conniving, and they're, they're, they're like Jacob's before he got changed. Come on, yeah, 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 we've got some Judases out there who will betray you and, and sit at the table and eat with you and talk with you and tell you they love you and then turn around and stab you in the back, turn around and ridicule your name, turn around and put you down and put their foot on top of you while you're down ah, but we have to find out that 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 when we play and keep playing and keep getting entangled uh, 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 God has God has God has been letting some of us um, come out of the same entanglements over and over again Mm. He's been allowing some of us to come out of some stuff over and over and over and over. Uh, uh, but as soon as we come out of it, uh, we find ourselves getting right back into it. And sooner or later, can I tell you that your strength will run out. Mm. When you fight the enemy and you keep playing with the enemy, sooner or later, your strength may run out. Because uh, 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 it's like when you go in uh, um, and you're wrestling and you're wrestling and you're fighting. And if you never take a break, if you never go back and get revived, if you never go back and get some energy, if you never go and put some liquid on the inside, then your strength and your endurance begins to wall away. And so the enemy has us right where he wants us to be. That's why the scripture warns us that, that it, will be, it would have been better that we never came to know God. And, and, the, and the instructions, the commandments that he has entrusted us with versus knowing them and going back. Come on, you have to tell yourself, I'm not going back. Uh, I'm not going back. I'm not, I'm not letting go. I'm not giving in. I'm not, I'm not going to allow the enemy to win in my life. But, but uh, uh, I, I, I can't go back. Mm, I can't go back. Yeah, I can't, I can't go back. I can't allow the enemy to, to re-entangle me in the yoke of bondage again. I can't keep going back to the same man that keep hurting me. Come on, I can't keep running back to the same relationship that keeps wounding me. Come on, I can't stay in a place where I'm not wanted. Come on. I can't keep doing and dealing with the same thing over and over again because some of us are dealing with things over and over again because God is trying to get you to move but you're so afraid to move or because because you're used to where you are you're you're happy with where you are I don't understand how or how can a person be happy in a place that makes them unhappy come on how can you be happy in a place where you're miserable how can you be comfortable in a place or in in a friendship or relationship that's one-sided here it is you're giving and giving and pouring out and nobody's giving back to you how is it that you're comfortable staying where you are come on I'd rather be like the men who were lepers and say if I go in I'm gonna die if I sit here I'm gonna die but I refuse to sit where I am I refuse to stay entangled in the yoke of body I refuse to continue to wrestle against the same thing I refuse to allow the enemy to keep pounding on me and beating on me and speaking ill thoughts in my mind I refuse it today I refuse it today I refuse it today and I, I, I'm not going to keep uh getting entangled I'm not I'm not going to keep getting entangled I'm I'm not going to allow the enemy to keep winning over my life I'm I'm not going to allow him to win I'm not going to allow him to get the victory I'm not going to allow him to win in my life uh, because I realize uh, uh, the more the more the more we we wrestle and go back and forth with the enemy 
things happen in our lives and, 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 and it's not always um, turns out the way that we think it ought to be. Look what happens here in the word of God. It says, it says here, it says uh, in verse number 22, it says, uh, um, but uh, it, it happens here in verse number 22. It says this, it says, um, um, they demonstrate the truth of the Proverbs. He says that a dog returns to his own vomit and a pig, a clean pig, which was washed or a swole, uh, which was washed. He waddles in the mud. Ah, I, I, I want to talk to you this morning again from this topic that I'm leaving the mess behind. You've got to leave the mess behind. Now, I'm, I'm saying this because some of us have been dealing with things and, and God has brought us out of things and, and and because of our actions and things that we have done, we keep re-entangling ourselves. It's not the enemy that's entangling you. I want to tell you that. But it's you that keep running back. It's you that keep desiring the same thing. It's you that keep wanting to have the same results over and over. It's you, but you have to be like this young man who, who, who we call the particle son. And you have to get in your mind and come to yourself and come to your senses and realize that if ain't nobody gonna help me I gotta get back to the father come on ah, that's what God wants us to be and the only way that you can leave that mess alone uh, is if you get back to the father uh, and the enemy desires to keep you from getting to the father he wants you to give up and give in and throw in the towel but when you can put your trust in God uh, and remember that God is the one that brought you out uh, and remember that it was not you who cleans you it was not you who washed you water than snow it wasn't your blood that saved you but it was the blood of Jesus uh, that made you whole when you can remember that God brought you out of the miry clay and out of the muck and out of the dirt and out of the sin when you can remember with all the stuff that he's brought you from you'll remind yourself that I've got to leave this mess alone yes the enemy wants to try you and pull you back into things that you used to be in he wants to get you back in old relationships he wants to call you up late in the midnight hour and tell you all sweet nothings he wants to come by and drop in by your house uh, he wants to come in and be intimate with you uh, but God says if you can just be intimate with me uh, there won't be no room for the enemy uh, if you can be intimate with me uh, and talk to me uh, and open up your mouth to me uh, and stop talking to the enemy uh, come here Eve uh, Eve wasted her time uh, talking to the serpent uh, we ain't got no business uh, talking to snakes uh, you ain't got no business uh, hanging around snakes uh, hanging around around people uh, who don't want to serve God. Uh, people who try to make you good feel uh, like serving God is a bad thing. Uh, people who try to make you feel uh, that where you are now uh, is not going to go any further. Uh, but God wants you to know today uh, you've got to leave uh, all the mess behind. Uh, I am persuaded uh, that nothing shall separate me uh, from the will uh, and from the Lord uh, and from my Father. Uh, even if it means Means, uh, that is some stuff that's on the inside of me. Uh, God clean me up. Uh, I've got to leave the mess behind. Uh, I know it's difficult at times, uh, but leave the mess behind. Uh, I know sometimes it feels good, uh, but leave the mess behind. Uh, I know sometimes uh, you want to hold on to it uh, because it's a pleasure grip, uh, but if you can just leave uh, all of the mess behind, uh, I can guarantee you uh, that God's got something better. Uh, waiting on you he's got something greater waiting on you if you can just leave the mess behind hallelujah you've got to leave it behind come on you've got to leave it behind you've got to leave it behind I know it don't feel good but leave it behind I know it don't look good but leave it behind I know it don't sound good but leave it behind he wants you to carry the mess he wants 
wants you to carry the loads. But Jesus said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Come on, somebody. Start casting your mess at the feet of Jesus. Start casting your cares at the feet of Jesus. And God will do something new in your life. When you get rid of the mess, he'll clean you up. He'll make you better. He'll change your attitude. He'll change how you walk. He'll change how you talk. But you've got to make a decision to leave the mess alone. Tell somebody in your house, get away from that mess. Don't go back to it. Don't hold on to it. But trust and lean on the everlasting arm of the Father. And God said, and this kingdom of glory shall come in hallelujah hallelujah you gotta watch out for people and things that try to keep mess on you you gotta watch out for things and people who try to put mess on you he got to watch out for things uh, that, 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 that people try to put on you uh, and try to make you feel uh, uh, like nothing else is going to work in your life. Uh, uh, God says if you can handle uh, the what I have for you, uh, if you can just take away the weights, uh, if you can take away the things uh, that trying to weigh you down, uh, he says that I'll clean you up, uh, but you can't go back to it. Uh, this time God says, uh, I'm taking you out of the mess. Uh, I'm taking it away from you but you can't go back to it this is somebody's final time it's somebody's final warning and God said it is it yeah when I handled it when I was on the cross and they stretched me wide and they pierced my side I said it was finished so don't go back to something that is already dead don't go back to something that I delivered you out of don't go back to something that's going to cause you more pain than you can already handle ah, because I already bore the stripes I've already been pierced for you and so stop going back to the mess in your life stop going back giving the enemy antidotes stop going back giving the enemy arms to fight because when he looks at you and it says hey I've got him right where I want him what you find out woman of God uh, is whenever you go back to it uh, you go further than you thought you did uh, and every time you go further uh, it enemy around you uh, tightens up his grip uh, every step that you go uh, he tightens up the grip uh, the deeper you go uh, the more dirty put on you uh, the deeper you go uh, the further you press uh, into your own mess uh, the enemy tightens his grip uh, what God wants you to know uh, that regardless of where you are uh, I've got a way for you to get out of it and the way is is if you can lift up your voice in the midst of what you're dealing with and begin to give me praise and the way is to lift up your hands in the presence of your enemies and watch what I do when the enemy comes in like a flood he said I'll lift up a standard and all you've got to do is begin to praise begin to shout begin to dance begin to give him glory and watch what God is going to do with your life but you've got to leave the mess behind hey hallelujah hallelujah come on you've got to leave the mess behind you've got to leave it behind you've got to leave it behind you've got to leave it behind come on clap your hands in your house Lift your voice in your house because the mess is behind you. It has no victory over you. Death has no victory over you. Come on, you ought to give him praise for the mess being thrown away. He says, I'll throw your sins in the sea of forgiveness and remember them no more. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him glory right where you are. Give him glory right where you are. Because the messes of your life is over with. 
And so God gives you a warning today to leave that mess alone. <laughs> Don't go back to it. Don't keep dealing with it. Leave that mess alone. Leave it alone. There's no need for you to go back to it. There's no need for you to keep messing with it. Leave it alone. Come on. He's been too good to you for you to keep messing with the same stuff. He's been too good to you to keep running back to what the enemy has to offer. Come on. Huh? I know not all of us are, are running back to certain things. I know that. I know, I know all of us ain't dealing with this message. But I can promise you that there's something that you need to throw away. <laughs> Come on. Is it your attitude? Come on. Is it, is it the way you live? Come on. Is it the way you communicate with people? Come on. Is it the way you love people? Come on. Something about you that you can throw away and leave behind. Everybody has something. Huh? Just as clear as day as, as, as we all have different limbs on our bodies. All of us deal with something. Amen. And so today, if, if, if that may be you on today, and you say, Lord, I want to leave that mess behind. I want to forget those things which are behind me and press. Come on. Remember what it said. It says to be reformed is to, is to change one's behavior and character for the better. <laughs> How is it that we can be now new in, in God, new creatures, new creations, but yet we still have old habits? Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that everybody's... Uh, um, um, deliverance does take time but we can't use that as an excuse <laughs> what, did, what, 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 what did Paul say he said he says shall we continue in sin that grace shall abide huh in other words shall we shall we keep getting re-entangled <laughs> shall we keep getting trapped up in the same thing doing the same thing over and over and running back to God and say, save me again. Sooner or later, what happens is, and this is what happens even in, in the word of God right here in this text. In somewhat, in so many words, the people who get re-entangled over and over again, God eventually gives them over to a reprobated mind. So now you're definitely all talk and no gain. It's like a person who say they can play basketball <laughs> and then get out there on the court and you can't shoot a free throw. You can't make a layup. You can't do a, cross, a simple crossover because you're all talk and no game. And the enemy knows when you're all talk and no game. He knows. He knows by how you respond. If he hits your body with sickness and the first thing you think to do is to go to the doctor, he know where you at. Because even though we will eventually go to the doctor, the first thing that a believer does is praise. <laughs> and, and he understands also that some people uh, only, only pray when they are in trouble. <laughs> And so what the enemy does is because he's smart, elder, he'll sit back and see how you react to the prayer that you made. <laughs> he'll see if you'll get weary in well-doing. <laughs> he'll see if you get weary and stop trusting and praying when it don't look like it's coming to pass. And if he can get you in a place and he can catch you to where you are hopeless and doubtful, then he'll tangle you. 
will start wrapping around you like a snake. He'll start wrapping himself around you. And now your doubt is not only doubtful, doubtful that God can do it, but you'll be doubtful that God will do it. Because you have to first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. You start doubting God, period. All because somebody hurt you. Somebody did you wrong. And so now I've got to react and get re-entangled in the old nature because I can't let nobody talk to me like that because I can't let nobody get me like that because I can't let nobody uh, um, 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 embarrass me like that in front of other people. God says that he has something special for you. But he can't give it to you when you're still waddling in mess. <laughs> he can't give it to you when you're still performing the same things that you used to perform. When you're still dealing with the same stuff that you used to deal with. He wants to bless you. Come on now. Come on. He wants to take you out of, of the place that you are in. But you have to be willing and obedient. <laughs> then you'll eat the good of the land. <laughs> then you'll see the promises of God come to pass. And so if that's you today and you want, and you want to decide to do that, you want to decide, I, Lord, clean me back up. Get this mess out of me. Help me to be better. Change my character and my behavior. Just repeat, Lord, forgive me for the mess that I made and the mess that I went back to. Forgive me for I desire to be your child. I desire to make it in the kingdom. So God, I forgive me. Wash me again. Purify me. Oh God, I thank you, Jesus. And we bless your name now. And God, I'm asking now, God, that anyone that has prayed, I pray, God, that you strengthen them with all power. That they can walk in the newness of you. I pray now, Father, that you would touch their lives from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray, God, that you would demonstrate your, amashe, your power in their lives now. Demonstrate how good you are. God, do what the song said and throw your weight around in the lives of that individual now. Not only in their lives, but God, all who hear us today. Yes, yes. Throw your weight around on our job. Throw, throw your weight around on, in our homes. Throw your weight around in the grocery store when we're in there, God. Throw your weight around in our children's lives, in their hearts, and in their lives. Throw your weight around, God. Reveal who you really are. That we can walk better. That we can talk better. And this is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you were blessed by the word of God, I believe that the, the um, giving is a, is a good thing for us to do. Give to the word of God, sow unto the word of God, and watch God give back to you and sow back into you. Amen. We love you, and we thank you for um, tuning in with us. We thank you for it, and we just ask that you will continue um, to pray for us as we move forward into the things of God. In the name of Jesus, and we want you to continue to keep um, each other lifted up in prayer. Because all of us go through something. Each one that you see on the line, each one that you know. If you have a prayer request, inboxes, let us know. Put it in the tag down below, and we'll pray for you, and we'll be in contact with you. We love you here at the Tent of David. God bless you, and may heaven continually smile upon you. Go in peace. Enjoy the rest of your day. Amen.